Good morning and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. Daylight is just arriving here at 6 11 a.m. I listened to the headlines on the news, WDSU Channel 6, first television station in New Orleans. And uh, now we're doing a taste challenge between Black Velvet. This is not new. I can tell you that this whiskey is no debutante. 1951. Bottled in New York, distilled in Alberta, Canada, versus 31 year old, well, not this bottle actually, but the brand, Canadian Crest. Introduced in 1987, produced by Sazerac in Canada for the Albertsons store empire bottled in Kentucky. It says, Canadian whiskey with natural flavors, approved by John James. <laughs> okay. Bottled Louisville, Kentucky. Oh. Oh boy, Canadian Crest special blend. What makes what makes it special? Uh well, you know, a lot of these companies put stuff on the bottles and on the can and bottle labels, and it just is what we would call glittering generalities. They don't mean much. Uh, like saying that Scoresby blended scotch is rare. It's so rare you can get it at Walmart. Okay. Um, Although I think they stopped carrying Scoresby, they had a closeout. All right, but in, in, these are both 80 proof. So let's see. CC, Canadian Club? No. Canadian Crest. This is not going to be much of a challenge. And I'm going to. That's got to be David. <laughs> Going to the ER. Um, I have to get back with him. I don't understand that. All right. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to call him. Emergency, okay? Anyway, they're both 80 proof. Let's see about the age statement. Let's see if he can go answer the phone. people I'll send him a, a reply say why sorry to interrupt this live. you see that's what pro the problem with going live kind of weird. All right. Um, okay, so I got Canadian Crest. It's not going to be much of it, like I was trying to say before I got interrupted. But, I mean, legitimate interruption going to the ER. Uh...
let's see what was I gonna say. I don't think it's gonna be much of a taste challenge, and I'm gonna tell you why because that's what I was about to say. I'm gonna tell you why because the black velvet tastes pretty much like an American blended whiskey, meaning you just get a lot of corn distillate, you know, grain neutral spirit, just like a lot of base. That's what I mean, base, just like a basic column still grain alcohol. Then you get a little wood, a little barrel, you know, wood, barrel wood, and a little bit of dry flour, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit. Of, so it's all just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Because it's about 80%, you know, it's about 80% grain neutral spirits. Then you've got 20% rye whiskey, barley, malt whiskey, and um, then some corn whiskey. Corn, they call it corn high rye which is like super high proof corn whiskey. It's like, it's like 70% alcohol. You couldn't drink it on its own, but they add it as a flavoring. And then the Canadian Crest, yeah, it's got the base also, the grain neutral base, the corn distillate. But it seems like they add some, they say natural flavoring. Well, in Canada, the law of Canada, <laughs> that means like, um, maybe plum wine or some other sort of wine and some brandy and or, okay, and or brandy, rum and bourbon of any sort of combination, okay? So, um, it's not artificial flavoring, they can't add that. It's gotta be distilled beverage. Hello, Ron, says Max Walt. Hello, Max Walt. Sorry for the interruption. Well, I'm not really sorry. I mean, that happened. My friend sends me a text saying going to the ER. I don't know what that's about. I uh, guess I'll find out <clears throat> later. I was planning to go over there and do some beer reviews, but that's probably not going to happen. You never know, boy. Okay, I need to add a little more Canadian Crest because um, I want it to be the even amount. Because sometimes that little bit of weight difference, when you're doing these blind taste tests, just by just by virtue of holding them, you can uh, detect that little bit of weight difference. Or at least I can. Maybe I'm very sensitive to these things. I'm gonna drink a little bit down. All right. So I gotta say this, it's kind of remarkable because um, Canadian Crest, Black Velvet, I paid $9.99, you know, not a, not a lot of money. It's been around a long time. It's a well-known brand. I asked my father, you ever heard of Black Velvet? Oh yeah, you heard of it. He didn't think he'd ever had it. But. So then um, I've been putting it in taste challenges against $5.99 per bottle uh, whiskey, $4.99 per bottle, like with Albertsons. And I got to tell you the truth, it hasn't been doing that well. Um, it hasn't been losing. It hasn't been losing. But <laughs> here comes the messages. But it hasn't been winning, OK? Um, and it's just been kind of like, what is all of this? Foot blew up Thursday. Going to the, still swollen. His foot blew up and it's swollen. Well, that's strange. That don't sound good. That sounds like a diabetes type situation, right? Like, I don't know. I don't get it. I'm not a physician, right? Sure hope it gets better. I don't know. Or is that, I don't know. I don't know what caused all that. All right. Gout, something, I don't know. Hope he's better. I'm going to call him after this. Scary stuff, man. 
so it hasn't been really dominating at all. It's just been in play, in play. Okay, well, fine. You say, well, it's in play. I know, but if it's only in play against whiskeys that are even in some cases half the price, that is not a good argument for black velvet. You say, well, it's a budget whiskey. I understand that, but it's not even beating out stuff that's like almost below budget. You know what I mean? Like what some people would call, what do they call that? Uh, like a, not bum juice, uh, rot gut, but none of this is, you know, Albertsons just sells it really cheap, but it's not, it's not shining. And uh, it's arguing against a repurchase. If it cannot beat the Albertsons for $4.99, well, heck, guess what? I'll buy the Albertsons for $4.99 in theory, because I'm not going to revisit any of these, but Okay, I'm gonna tell. I'm, I know I'll be able to tell it apart on aroma only. I've blabbed enough, and I get these emergency messages, so gives it gives the whiskey time to um, set up. <clears throat> Getting a little sourdough barrel wood, not really char. Little some rye smells like American blended whiskey. In other words, that's black velvet. This one. Uh, um, getting a little bit of that strange, I don't know what you call this. I don't know what flavoring they use. It's almost like a cotton candy or a honeycomb. It's honeycomb, honey. It's bizarre. And you get that with Canadian Club too. And I don't know what it is. It's not too pronounced here, though, with that Albertsons. It was just like, whoa, there we go. It was too obvious. So it's a little closer together. I think we better do a taste. But I'm going to preliminate the put. Remember, this is preliminary, preliminary. You can't call me on it, but this is the Black Velvet, and this is the uh, Canadian Crest. Initial guess. It's not the official guess, okay? You know, right? Like, I make my official predictions for football every June, but I might discuss it beforehand and tell people, well, I think this might happen. I think that might happen, but I'll tell them, wait, but don't hold me to it because I haven't posted my official prediction. And once I post them on Facebook and write them in my little sports uh, folder, then it's official. So whatever I say, then I got to live with it. Yeah, I mean, I think black velvet might have some golden sherry in it or dry sherry, probably Taylor sherry, since Constellation Brands owns it now. But I mean, that wouldn't be unusual even if they didn't own it because Taylor is a common sherry, you know, New York, and it's used for cooking and these kind of purposes. It's, it seems like they probably use dry sherry, but... Uh, I don't know. It just seems like it has that, but it's pretty standard and basic. And you could use the term dull. No, 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 no. I don't say it's bad. If somebody would get on here and say black velvet is bad, it's bad. It's not bad. I don't understand how people say bland is bad. You know, there's different adjectives you can use to describe beer, wine or liquor, especially what I mostly do is beer, right? So. That was my whole argument for this channel for eight years where I just said, going on eight years. And we always use that same baseline argument, right? I say, take a beer like Budweiser. You could make a strong argument that it's dull, it's bland, it's not too terrific. It's just kind of like standard. Okay. Which in a way gives it wide appeal because a lot of people could drink it and it's not going to offend people because it's just so basic. I mean, it's well made. It's hard to make it. And the consistency level is very high. It's uh, their quality control is very high, but it's still, it, you could say dull. Okay. But then you get on the internet and people are writing reviews talking about how horrible it is. Oh, Budweiser is horrible. I'd rather drink urine, you know, and then, then you're like, come on, man. Now they're like fishing for like validation or they're trying to build up 
credibility in the beer snob world, you know, position themselves like I'm against the corporate big man, you know, and all of this bull. It's like, come on, man. Why can't you just get on there and say it's dope? Then move on. And then you can talk about all the wonderful flavors of craft beer and all. And everybody's fine with that because I say that all the time, too. This craft beer here has wonderful flavors. Oh, sometimes they're not that good, but usually they're pretty good. And you don't even have to build yourself up by tearing down. But what was it? I don't know why that's. So that's the same thing with Black Velvet. Is it a great product? No. Was it designed to be one? Not really. Is it a budget brand? Yes. Is it dull? Yes. Is it worth running or running around trying to find? No. Is it okay for mixed drinks? Yes. You see what I mean? Like. Is it horrible? No, it's far from horrible. Is it well made? Yes. Is it exactly what it's designed to be? Yes. Okay. I hear that little puppy out there barking. <laughs> um, I've got to say this about Canadian Crest. It's a lot more subtle. Like there's a very subtle presentation. There is the plum wine. There is that sherry, which is almost like cream sherry in this case. And these little intricate taste at, uh, additions. Let's call it taste additions. Because the bulk of the flavor is the standard American blended whiskey or Canadian blended whiskey. But... Hold on a second. Hello? Hey. What do you think caused it? That's, yeah, that's strange. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah, man. Well, I'll be praying for you. So keep me updated on it. Yeah, because if you were there at 11 o'clock at night on a Friday night or Saturday night, you'd be waiting six hours, you know. So. Okay. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, that's the best choice, I'm sure. Right. Yeah, you got to watch out for that. <laughs> oh, well. After you, yeah, after you make the copay. Well. Probably. No copay. It's gonna probably be a hundred bucks at least. Probably gonna be a hundred bucks at least. Oh man. Well, I'm live. I'm live on the air right now, doing a um, taste challenge. But okay, thank you. Best wishes on that. All right, bye. All right, folks. Sorry about that. <laughs> live transmission. So, uh, can understand if you didn't want to keep watching. But anyway, that's. Uh, David with the big beard on the way to the hospital with his foot blown up. And he said, that's not normal. He was looking for a bite like he got bit, but that doesn't seem like it was a bite. He said he doesn't think it was. So it, we'll see what happens. You know, you just never know. You never know. 
Okay, so I mean, I've had these problems before, right? With hangouts and people calling, but that's just normal life. Like my neighbor across the street, remember, calling me to say she got food for me. So I had to get up in the middle of the hangout and go get food. Okay. I will say this much. These two are not remarkably different. Well, once again, you want to take two products. They're very similar. One is $9.99. One is $5.99. Okay. Who wins? There's only one answer. The Canadian Crest. I mean, you want to pay $4 extra for a bottle just so you can have a name brand? Go ahead, buy it. And it tastes no better? Then, you know, I don't know what you've achieved. Now, with beer, yeah, th there's a lot of tre uh, treachery out there with these store brands. Like, go to Walmart and get the Rockdale. Oh, yeah, you... You don't want to save a little bit of money there because it's so inferior to the name brands. But in this case, there is no particular difference. Uh, one last sip. <coughs> Woo. You see, now that one there has a high ride. I don't want to say high rye, a relatively high rye content compared to that one, which is another indication that it's probably a Sazerac product. Because you know Sazerac, you drink their stuff, they have a house style, and it tends to be a relatively high rye presentation. So uh, it this is a virtual tie. N neither is better than the other, neither is worse than the other. And they're very similar in flavor. Once again, by default, Canadian Crest wins. It has to win. There's no other answer. The lower price item always wins if the flavors are similar and the quality is similar because what else are you going to differentiate them with? You're going to say, well, the Canadian Crest doesn't have a very pretty label. I'll agree with that, that the label's kind of crummy. But, you know, I can live with that. That's, that's, that's a minor issue. All right. So, okay, let's call it Black Velvet. Here we go. BV, BV, Canadian Crest, CC. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. I did it. Well, okay, so this is like uh, 10 times in a row, I believe. I'm not counting. I'm just, oh, yeah, it's coming out more. I'm not counting. I'm just saying, you know, it's got to be. It's got to be that these Canadian whiskeys are not totally alike. There is differentiation with these, okay? Now, am I gonna tell you that you can go out and buy Canadian blended whiskeys for a low price and get just fabulous flavor? No, I would not say that. That would be a stupid thing to say. But can you go out and buy a whole array of cheap Canadian blended whiskeys of various brands and sources and find a lot of flavor differences within that parameter? Oh, yes. And in fact, the differences are noticeable enough that you can tell these brands one from the other on aroma only. I've been demonstrating that, demonstrating that. Now, you, your counter argument might be, well, who the hell would want to ever do that anyway. That's so stupid. Well, I don't think it's stupid. I mean, if that's what somebody wants to do and they enjoy doing it, I don't know why that would bother you. You know, like I noticed that also talking about a little rant. You notice that on the internet, like people are always bothered like by what other people do. They'll say, oh, I, I can't stand that beer reviewer. He always wants to, like, the, oh, you know, he always gives everything a high score. Like me, for instance, they'll come to me. He always likes everything. Well, I don't like everything. You can see that. Do I like most everything? Well, yeah. But why does that matter? Like, why would you care? <laughs> like, so what? I mean, some people are very 
picky. Like I, I, there are other beer reviewers that seem to hate everything. There's one guy, he just, just doesn't like most stuff. So in his opinion, most of the beer on the market is substandard and not good. Well, that's fine if that's how he feels about it. He seems to get a lot of free beer. Well, that's fine. I don't care. I'm not jealous. I don't have insecurities about that. I mean, that's fine. But he doesn't like a lot of stuff. He's so picky about it. And he'll say, no, 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 this is a 84 out of 100, 76 out of 100. Oh, this is bad. This is oxidized. This is, oh, oh, oh damn, bad. Oh, it's bad. Dogfish head is terrible. All terrible, you know. But, I mean, I'll watch the videos. They seem fine. I mean, I just think to myself, boy, he's so critical. You know, but I don't mind. I don't, like, stalk him around and wait to get alerts for every video so I can put a thumbs down and, like, scream at him. He's just on the internet. I'm not obsessed with him, so. Hello, Sector. Good morning to you. So, I don't know. It's just things I think about. People. Some people are deranged. It seems to be. There's beer reviewers I don't like. Not personally. I don't dislike any of them personally, really. But, like, uh, like I just don't like their... We're we talking about two or three at the most four, but I would say two of those four probably don't even exist anymore. You know, this here today, gone tomorrow type thing. But I just, like there's a guy in Canada, he doesn't talk about the beer. It'll be a 50 minute video and it'll be such and such beer review. And I'm thinking, where's the review? I mean, you're talking about guns, you're talking about this magazine, you're making these inside jokes to people that you know personally that I've never met, I've never heard of these people. I don't wanna watch that. Well, guess what? I don't watch it. <laughs> I'm not subscribed to the channel. I don't, but I'm not obsessed with it. I don't go around telling everybody, oh, don't watch his channel. I'm just indifferent to it. So that's the whole point I'm trying to make. If somebody like myself or somebody else wants to review cheap, budget, blended whiskeys, so what? I mean, why do you care? What difference does it make? Anyway, but I can't answer for uh, insanity, you know, or, or mental illness or um, people having obsessive behavior, you know. I mean, I can't. I can't answer for that. I'm just over here. I'm in Louisiana. I make videos on the internet live. Okay, you know, no big deal. It's not important. Uh, so this video was a little bit disrupted by my friend calling saying he's gone to the emergency room but you know these things happen that's the risk of live video so we'll get past that we'll get past it all right now so this canadian blended whiskey thing has run its course for now but there's more to come and in fact a lot more to come now you might say, what other weird, obscure brands do you have? Oh, many. I have uh, Caliber, <laughs> Canadian blended whiskey. Oh my gosh. I've got heir to the throne. And I'm thinking to myself, I'd like to know what throne they think they're gonna inherit. Uh, <laughs> oh, and then I got some quasi-legitimate brands like Canadian Windsor and uh, the Northern Lights. I say quasi-legitimate. But, but starting tomorrow, this is the plan at least, tomorrow, scotch whiskey, blended scotch whiskey. You say, oh, I'm coming after you. I hate you. I hate you because it's not single malt. Only the good people drink the single malt. You are no good because you drank the blended scotch whiskey. I don't care, you know. Maybe I'll do 10,000 videos about blended scotch whiskey and I'll be thoroughly in interested in it. <laughs> um, but I have uh, Piper Dean tomorrow. Piper Dean, <gasps> whoa, against ancient age. Uh, I'm sorry, same state, bottled in Kentucky. I don't know where that came from. 100 Pipers. <laughs> Piper Dean against 100 Pipers. Oh boy. I actually think Piper Dean's gonna beat 100 Pipers. 
believe it or not. Okay, let's look at some comments, then we'll wrap it up. I'm going to go walk in three times today, I hope. Good morning. Oh, yes, Sector said that. Dancing Dog says, I hope your friend is okay, Ron. I do, too. He's pretty worried about his foot all swollen up. I mean, I'd be, like, terrified, you know. Oh, I had the Landshark Lager last week. Found it on sale. Very good lager. You see now by praising land shark that gets you kicked out of the beer drinking community because they frown on land shark lagers. So you might want to watch that. Don't say that. Don't admit to that. Thanks for the review, says DD60. You're welcome. Sector says your friend is in my prayers. Well, I appreciate that. I'll be praying for him. He seemed pretty concerned. He said he wanted to go to urgent care. But then he was reading bad articles about he just thinks that urgent care is where doctors that nobody wants goes to work. <laughs> that may be totally untrue. Uh, he wanted to go to the to the clinic where he works. He works for a university and they have a clinic and it's free, but they, it, the, they, he couldn't get in. It was booked up. So he, he was reluctant to go to an independent hospital because you're going to have to pay a hundred dollar emergency room charge copay. But, you know, sometimes you got to pay that's better than dying. <laughs> Although I know some people that would rather die, I think, than do the copay, right? You put a gun against their head, you tell them your money or your life, they'd say, I gotta think about that. <laughs> well, I like American adjuncts, says Dancing Dog. You do like American adjuncts because you are a communist. <laughs> Maybe it makes me a bad person. Oh, well, I'll be bad, enjoy my lager. Oh uh, yeah, that was a uh, Blue Arch to Cult song from night from 2001. Blue Arch to Cult from the uh, Curse of the Hidden Mirror. I just like to be bad. Okay. Well, we must end the hangout. We must end the hangout. I could do a live hangout with Budweiser Copper Lager, but I won't. All right, no, but I'm going to go. I have some, be oh, I have so many craft beers to examine right now. One is the barrel aged founders called Barrel Runner, made with rum, barrel. And, and it gets terrible scores, so I'm curious. I don't know if I like it. Uh, I've got this new... Uh, Sweetwater 420 hemp flavored beer. I said, oh boy. I mean, I just got a whole bunch of stuff. It's pretty cool what I've got, you know. To me, it's cool. To me. Dancing Dog 60 says, looking forward to your upcoming reviews. Well, thank you. All right, y'all take care. Sorry for the interruption, but you know how that goes. Blah, 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 blah. Murmur, murmur, murmur. <sighs> Sorry, Black Velvet. You ain't making it. And we have an examination coming up on Labor Day evening with Black Velvet. Ooh, Get ready for an exploration, an exploration of dullness. Dull. Dull is the new. Dull is the new exciting. Dull is the new exciting. <laughs>